Carl Morris takes on Luke Gilbert in the third of our quarterfinals. Carl Morris just hot off the table, so he's had to go straight back on after his win over Sean Chipperfield. Well, how's that for a break? Not necessarily a man associated with having the most powerful break, but it's fair got into those. Whatever colour he decides to go for, yellow's the choice. I think Carl enjoys being back on the big stage. He's obviously been a prolific tournament winner over the years. Spent so much time playing at the top level in the years leading up to the launch of Ultimate Pool. This series has been it's rejuvenated his career and got him back playing again. <laughs> He's always been a big occasion player, natural entertainer, loves being in front of a crowd. He seems to have relished playing a bit quicker. He's got an interesting tempo of play. It's a bit hard to say whether he's a naturally quick or slow player. He can sometimes take quite a long time on what seems like a simple shot. He can sometimes get down for it a few times and have a look around. And other times he can play very quickly indeed. He's actually kind of relished the introduction of the shot clock. More matches been played under timed conditions. This is an ideal position to end up in for the first frame. Very solid break, all split out nicely. Just coming around to look, the right centre pocket is a little bit in the way of the most straightforward line, so probably going to have to try and hit the cushion just below it and then take the cue ball up the table. Brought that red into play, but was always favouring the top half of it, so not likely to be a problem. Bad angle here, could ideally have done with the white a little bit further up the table, but this should still be a comfortable shot. Well, he walks away in disgust, he'll actually be okay with that. He's landed kind of on it and he's been a little bit fortunate. He's not left quite the right angle on the ball to the top left corner. He ended up screwing straight down the table when it would probably have been easier if he'd had more angle to play off the cushion. It wasn't the easiest line and ended up coming far too close to the black as it happens. Doesn't look like there should be any harm done though. And the black is safely down. You really can't write off Carl Morris. He's had so much tournament success over so many years. Every chance of that continuing. I believe nothing's gone in there. The balls are spreading very well around the table and they were kind of fighting with each other to go in the pocket, but nothing quite made the cut. to get the first two frames on the board. It's a pretty nice pattern. Luke's break was a good one other than the failure to pot anything.
Judge shot that. Was looking to come further down the table. He's, he's ended up on the wrong line and also the wrong length because he can't get through to the ball over the corner, but he's left the one to the middle far too thin. Not actually sure really what he's got left here. Attacking shot sort of messed the table up, which I guess is about the best second prize he could have hoped for. He'll be annoyed with that. Nobody likes to let slip that kind of opportunity, especially at the beginning of a match when you've got your opponent frozen on zero. Always nice just to run with it, try and rack up as many frames as you can before they get started. to chase a bit. Obviously not a good outcome in the end. The ball in the hand, adding insult to injury. Also opening the balls up. The ball in the hand is quite useful to Luke here because the ball is putting it behind. It's the only real difficult one on the table. With ball in hand, you can obviously get perfect on it. Feels like a real star of the future, Luke Gilbert. and He's already a star of the present. Seems like every overseas trip he had in 2023 to play pool, he ended up returning with a suitcase full of trophies. Great success at both the World Championships and the European Championships. Smashing through things at age group level, under 23 champion of both, and also lifting the main European title. That experience of winning just has to be helpful I mean, those were absolutely top-level tournaments anyway, but even if it's not, just the experience of cutting through a field and playing lots of matches one after another, as you have to do to get through a deep tournament field, super beneficial. Well, this just looks a very classy player. He's got a very textbook technique, strikes the ball really well, inspires a lot of confidence in the way he goes about things. You can see he's not really wasting any time here. He's just getting through this finish. Slightly scrappy frame, this one that could really have gone either way. Usually set to match up well when both players win early frames. They both feel like they're in it, so they can maybe loosen up a bit. This is the third quarter final, the fourth one, which is underway at the moment. Sean Story against Craig Warningham over on table three. The winner of those two matches will play later on tonight. A reminder about the schedule for the, the rest of the evening. We've got women's pro series action kicking off on tables two and three after the current matches are finished. And then over on the main arena table we've got the Pro Series semi-final kicking off at 7 o'clock, second semi-final 8 o'clock, Women's Pro Series final 9 o'clock and then the main Pro Series final, this event final coming at around 10 o'clock. May well run a little past that timing but that's a rough guide as to where we're going to be tonight. Entertaining night in Blackpool 
entertainment capital of the northwest of England. Always nice to have these kind of big showpiece finals on a Friday or Saturday night with a big crowd in. Bit of a rejig to the scheduling this season to allow that to happen. You feel this may be the pattern of the match. Like Carl can sometimes look like he's just chasing a finish a little bit more than some of the other top players. Does get a very high percentage though. Luke will be deriving some confidence from the fact that Carl looks like he might have a mistake in him. He knows there's going to be a few frames when he, he won't have much to do with it and Carl will just clear up. But The last couple of frames have shown that there may be routes back to the table where you wouldn't necessarily have expected it. Very good curious Luke Gilbert. You saw there that shot played although it was over the pocket. The red's not sitting too badly. He's got the one that's slightly tied up near the left centre, but I think the, the right hand of the two to the left centre will pop past the first one. If you can't quite get through to the one that's nearest the pocket, you can just play a little nudge onto the yellow. Just coming to look at it now. I think you'll come round and look at it from the other end. Like You can see players look from the pocket end, but it's actually surprisingly difficult to judge anything that way around. It's normally behind the shot that really tells you. So we'll find out if he does need to play the cannon or not. Well, good news, bad news. He's open at the middle pocket well, but lost the white in the process. Just got focused on that plant, taking his eye off where the cue ball is going. A pot to the right hand side of the table. Should be able to control the cue ball. Again, good news, bad news. Basically, not worked out too badly though, because although it's quite thin on the ball to the bottom right hand corner, the white is naturally going to be tracking round. You can play off right hand side cushion and top cushion to take the pace out of it and take a line towards the ball that's left over the left middle. Oh, he's going to need a good nudge here. This isn't going to work. Trying to come past that yellow, I think. I don't think you'd have been trying to play through the gap of them. Wasn't far off getting past that. If he just takes a slightly firmer nudge on it, he could have skimmed off the side. He's landed himself into a whole bunch of trouble, though, because he's frozen tight to this yellow. You really want to be coming at this red from over the right-hand side of the table to give yourself a chance of potting it, but he's going to have to come up and down, try and clip it in. So, ball in hand for Carl. Immediately placing it behind the two yellows that are together at the bottom of the table. Just run the top one through to the right centre and then all the other balls are there for him. This is a chance that every pool player loves, particularly with ball in hand, because you can get after the difficult ball immediately. position there's nothing to be done just a case of keeping good control of the white
the only shot with any scope for anything to go wrong, but you'd be clutching at straws if you were hoping for that. Did have to play a bit of a shot there to get prime position, but landed nicely. Plays with a Q ha the bridge hand a long way back. A lot of Q hanging over the hand, particularly given that he plays with reasonably short Q. Anyway, that's all forgotten as Luke breaks off in frame four. Another great break. Two balls flying in. Two yellows down. So Red Bull's the choice. A bit to think about here. He's got the ball on the left cushion. He's not really landed that nicely on the ball on the racking line. Looking to drop through for this one to the right centre, but he's left the angle a bit awkward. Oh, what a piece of queuing that is. It's one thing playing a shot like that if you can get to the full ball, but having to queue down on it like that Quite a tight angle into the middle pocket. That's a great bit of queuing. You can elect to leave the ball that's on the left cushion below the middle pocket until last because if you can just drop on it, you can play position on the black without having to do very much. It's going to have to be the ball to the middle next. Ideally, I think he's going to go middle, then top left, and then the one down the line to get position onto the eight ball. He's going to have one difficult shot here. However well he plays this, he's not going to be right behind the ball down the left cushion to the bottom left pocket. So all about this shot, this is not an attractive looking shot on an eight ball pool table, on an American pool table where you can play the balls at pace down the rails, it's a different story. Even though these pockets play reasonably generous down the cushions, this shot needs some queuing. Very nicely done. Playing that weight always gave him the most chance to just catch a bit of the cushion on the way down, but very good from where he was, very solid clearance that from Luke Gilbert, that wasn't a formality by any means. Qu quite a lot's happened already in this match, even though it's only two all, there have been quite a few moments, it's not all been simple stuff, been some good shots, a couple of mistakes, Carl breaks off in frame five, gives it a, a big hit, gets a good clean contact. Well, that's his analysis of how this break's turned out. I don't think it's quite as bad as he's saying. It's, it's a bit of traffic at the bottom of the table, but there are balls near the ones that are tied up, so it's not an insurmountable position. I guess his main frustration is probably the lack of easy starter. I don't know if he can pot any yellows. That one may be just too far past the left centre, if he can clip that back. Gonna go reds either way. It's got an angle in potting this ball to the right centre. He can knock into the cluster. Well, he was trying to knock into the cluster. That's gone a bit wrong. I felt like he's maybe a bit short of pace there because even if he misses that yellow, I'm not sure he's hitting that quite hard enough to open those balls up. Wouldn't have been so bad actually if the yellow had gone in. It's kind of a worst case scenario from Carl's point of view that it stayed over the pocket. Lots 
So plenty of loss of turn shot. Not bad, and certainly from where he was a moment ago, that was pretty much as good as he could do. He's put some pressure on Luke because there are several reds in open positions, so he can't just have a free hit at something. So looking at where he might leave the cue ball. This is one of these situations where the 30 second shot clock is not very long because there's actually quite a lot to think about. That seemed to be the spot he was picking out. He just come over and look on that, that cushion. You would think from this angle that he can play, well yeah, you can clearly see from there, he can play the red off the yellow to open up the left middle pocket. That's helpful to a point. Obviously that wouldn't completely deal with the situation though. You might have been hoping that that yellow would come out and just glance off the other yellow. There was perhaps a, a low percentage chance that he opened up one of the clusters. I don't think it was very likely from where the yellow was sat. So always knew he was probably going to have to find another way into it. Does he want to continue attacking here or is he going to bail out? Quite where he's going here. Maybe feels that the right one of the two reds that looks like they're tied up may pot to the left centre. I think if it didn't, he'd have had to route differently. Well, we'll find out. He's still got two problems. If that ball does pot, that's only one of the issues dealt with. Is he going to try and play into the cluster now? I mean, he's coming around to look at where he wants to be, but this is going to be trusting to an element of luck. Well, he's gone into that cluster with a lot of pace. If the ball does pot to the right centre, he's actually going to be pretty happy with that outcome. Well, in fact, he's going to be more than pretty happy with that outcome because he's landed on the ball to the bottom corner and the natural angler is going to bring the cue ball back towards just below where the black is. So we've got natural position. Well, he's going to be disappointed with that. Been a bit fortunate with where that ball had ended up and hasn't really fully capitalised. So Luke deciding to go for the positive option. There was some potential there of playing a loss of turn shot, just not from where he was, but later on playing yellow into the red that's over the bottom right corner, but it wasn't an ideal ball to do that. I felt that the, the positive option was better. Potted a great ball down this exact rail a couple of frames ago. This one's a slightly easier pot, but it's Every bit is important to get it because if he doesn't get this ball in, he's almost certain to leave a shot. Just looks so confident though, doesn't he? He's not really going about this thinking that there's any risk of leaving anything there. It seems like he came to the table and thought, well, this is an obvious clearance. Well, let's be having them. Even that shot, confident piece of queuing, smashed it into the back of the pocket. And this, you'd feel to the extent there is a difference between the players, is, is going to be it. Luke's just got that firepower when he's in. Such a good potter, just a little bit smoother maybe on the ball. So, players back in the arena. Luke Gilbert to get us underway. Not be too happy with that, plowing the cue ball straight into the corner pocket. 3-2 up, but it, it feels like a sort of delicate 3-2. It doesn't really feel like it's a much of a lead. It's obviously only a single frame anyway, but it feels like the kind of match that has got the potential to swing around a bit.
So, ball in hand for Carl, can drop the high in the red. Make a case for <coughs> reds or yellow from this position, but when he takes that red that's at the top of the table, he's got everything quite nice in fairly short compass at the bottom, which is why he's elected for the reds. So the two on the right hand side of these are slightly blocking each other, they're not quite a natural plant. And pot the one that's to the right of the black from where he is now. It's a slightly strange choice of shot that, I'm not sure quite. I was thinking you could come past the black and yellow in the middle of the table and be on the middle of the three reds. Felt like maybe taking the one to the, the right of the eight ball out the way while he was on it might have been an option. So he left a gap between these two. Well, based purely on his body language, I don't think he could have played for that gap because he looked pretty annoyed after he, he played the shot. I think that has to be seen as being second prize, but actually that's unlocked the pattern better than pretty much any other way he could have gone about it. And now suddenly he's speeding up because the whole table is open for him. So just swing the cue ball round for eight ball in the same pocket. Well, yeah, that tells you the answer, although I think the answer was fairly obvious anyway. Holds up his hand in apology to Luke Gilbert. Played a poor positional shot off the red to the bottom left-hand corner pocket. Thought for a moment that he was snooking on all the balls and in the end found a surprise gap through, which actually turned out to be a real blessing in disguise. So, three all now. The two players, Carl, will probably be happier with that score line. He's actually played some really good shots, but has also made a couple of mistakes. And on a different day, that could perhaps have led to a, a heavier score line against him. Had a very good first season on the tour when he joined Ultimate Pool in 2021 quite hit the heights in the last couple of years, although he's always been a contender it's not been knocking on the door of trophies, but it's not like he's ever an easy draw in a tournament He always gets something from Carl after the break. Provide his own commentary as to what he feels about these. Cue ball tracking towards that corner pocket, which is a thing that he's currently annoyed about. Despite his protestations at the beginning of the frame, good chance this. Thank you. 
to see where he wants the cue ball. Eight ball's tied up, so he needs to leave an angle where he can cannon into it. What he doesn't want to do is end up straight on this ball. So I entertained the idea of playing it to the left centre, but couldn't quite leave a good enough angle to get into it, so played round. This isn't the easiest cannon to get right. It would be quite easy to get stuck. No guarantee of knocking this black into a possible position. And although he's reacting with annoyance and understandable disappointment, that w was always a fairly likely outcome of coming into it at that angle. Could have favoured the yellow above it, but then you risk getting stuck to the black. You probably wouldn't have been snookered, but that could have been a bad outcome. It's a case of trading off some not ideal percentages. Where's this black ball? Carl Morris makes the black from an implausible position. So behind by the odd frame again. Luke Gilbert to break in frame eight. Oh, how has he come up dry here? That's extraordinary. Ball's threatening several of the pockets. Nothing down. Can we just be seeing a slight inflection point in this match? Carl's won that previous frame when maybe it looked like he wouldn't after he snookered himself. This will be a great frame for Carl to win. 5-3 is suddenly really putting the pressure on Luke. No way suggesting this is a match that Luke expected to win, but it was a match that he'll have fancied he had a good chance in. You may consider that he's played well enough to be ahead in this match, never mind behind. Middle of the three yellows does pot clean to the bottom left corner, so can take them in order now. Noticeably quickening up. So five three to Carl Morris. Maybe sometimes they're, they're saying that because it seems like the right thing to say and deep down they are dreaming of that path through to the final. One thing Carl's going to be particularly pleased with is his break. He's hitting the ball so cleanly, getting a lot of power in but also getting a very good connection. Yellows is going to have to be the colour because of the, the red tied up at the bottom. Although if the, the bottom red would go in past that yellow, maybe make a case for either. It's not a bad chance this. It's not a completely straightforward one. So not a great surprise. Yellows was the choice. Actually quite a good ball to have moved, even though that ball looked like it was quite strategically useful being over the corner pocket. You didn't want to get caught up in the traffic down there. You also had limited choices for an opening shot, so kind of forced into playing that. Ideally, you always like to take the balls out in zone, so would have liked to have been able to 
clear both balls at the top of the table, but the way they were covering each other, that wasn't an option. So he always knew he was going to have to go back for the one that's in the middle of the top cushion. <laughs> needed angle here. Would have liked to be a bit straighter. He's now in a position where this yellow to the top left is missable got to favour the thin side here but you've got to keep an eye on these you know, these pockets are generous this, this kind of shot with this much angle not a guarantee judged it really well the ball nearest the pocket obviously pots if he's dropped on the gap between the balls to get through to that may just be able to sneak the, the left-hand one past, if not. Yeah, so just looking at that. So, what does he choose to do here? Is he going to drop this in dead white and take the long black, or is he going to try and screw in to the cluster and move it? He's got probably a bit more angle than ideal for either of those shots. If he tries to screw back there's a chance of hitting the red first. If he tries to drop it in. I don't think he's going to be able to leave it quite straight. Not bad. A dead straight would have made it even easier. On these tournament tables this isn't too bad a shot. This is the kind of shot you almost never play to leave on a club table. Playing past the middle pocket up a rail is just too difficult. But this table is both flat and reasonably accepting. Oh, that's wide. That's wide all the way. If anything with those, you've got to just favour the near jaw, which is quite counterintuitive for a lot of pool players, but with a new tournament cloth and good quality equipment, the balls do tend to just slip in. It's going to be an interesting spot, this, because Luke had no real choice but to play that snooker. The rules now oblige Carl to attempt to hit this black, although it's subjective what attempt <coughs> would mean. He's certainly got to make a valid attempt. If he leaves it short, it's not often you see a referee call that as being a deliberate foul. It will obviously be a foul if he, if he leaves it short. Does he just go straight for the jugular here? He's going to obviously make absolutely sure he doesn't catch the red before the black. Well, that gives you the answer. The referee just warning Carl about that outburst. That was red before black, so that is loss of frame. to call there are moments where it looks like Carl's going to go away with it there are moments when Luke looks really good in amongst the balls you think that eventually he'll manage to get there still only the odd frame between them this match was pretty late starting it was scheduled for 4 o'clock looks like it's going to go the full distance time wise as well particularly if Luke is able to clear up in this frame. He's holding his hand out to encourage the path of the cue ball. I think he'll be okay with where that is. See, the issue is the ball that's tied up near the red. can get into it off either of the two balls that are closest to the pocket. <coughs> well, there's cannons that you should be okay with, but there's a bit of jeopardy involved. <coughs> if he's going to play it this way, he wants to try and catch a, f a foolish part of the yellow. He doesn't want to just sneak off the thin left edge. 
well, it wasn't quite as played, but that was the outcome he was looking for. I don't think he was quite expecting to clip the red on the way past. But actually not a bad contact at all on the yellow. So just play around the two cushions, back for the remaining yellow in the same pocket. Very nice shot, very well controlled, he's taking these well. As he has throughout the match, Luke Gilbert looking good when he's in amongst the balls. This intriguing match continues, 10 frames played, 5 frames apiece. Carl to break in frame 11. Where this match has gone, you feel like a deciding frame is almost an inevitability at this point. Bit of similar reaction after pretty much all of Carl's breaks so far. He's fairly consistently made a ball. He's fairly consistently been annoyed at not leaving an easier shot. And generally with the previous ones, he's, he's been fairly consistent at then clearing the table up. Well, this time the degree of difficulty and lack of easy opening shots was too much, so just the containing shot. These balls are in a position where they're not in a great spot for a clearance, but they're not so far away from one either. It would only take one shot to open things up. I don't know that either player necessarily wants to be the first to chase after it, though. Could definitely be one of those ones where you get in first, open things up, and then hand the table over, which is why they seem to have got into a bit of cat and mouse. A very common thing to see in a pool match, this. Tipping tippy tappy off the single ball. That is happy that we've brought the evolution of the game forward as we've introduced successive rule sets. We've now drifted back to the game of billiards from the 1920s. It's an odd situation, this, because once one player starts doing this, the other one almost feels obliged to counter by doing the same thing because you don't want to be the one that opens the game up. Both players seemingly jostling to be reds, which is why they were taking so much care with the first part. Carl got no interest in choosing a colour, though. I mean, it's interesting because you can make a case for, for choosing a colour and then playing a safety. It doesn't commit you to going for the clearance, but both of them happy to leave an open table at the moment. Sort of wonder what's going to change, because I can't imagine either player is going to play into the cluster of balls which is causing the problem in the bottom left corner. Well, red slightly, one red slightly better, one slightly worse, still not a lot to choose here. Very strange the way this game is playing out at the moment. When we broke off this frame, we had 11 minutes 01 on the match clock. Looked like plenty of time to play three frames, potentially including a deciding frame if it went to six all. You wouldn't at that point have thought that a six red shootout looked very likely. If they're going to spend too much longer about this frame, the potential of a drawn result does come into play. <coughs> so that slight impasse seems to have been broken. Red's the colour for Carl. Now time of course starting to be a factor because we're playing to the 15 second shot clock and he's already used his extension. Does he go attack here, try and spring out the red that's tied up with the yellow? Did for a kind of controlled shot. He wasn't going in with a huge pace. He needed to catch that pretty clean. If 
he double kissed it was never coming out he was hoping to just hit the yellow I think now time is starting to be a real factor Referee just indicating to Luke that the lower of the two yellows is frozen to the rail. Which is relevant if he played a safety shot into it and nothing else hit a cushion. Don't think he's necessarily looking at that ball anyway. But everyone just making sure they understand the situation. Just trying to get the yellow into that corner. It's not terrible that it hasn't gone in from Luke's perspective. It's actually going to be quite a tricky frame to play out because it's a tactical frame that has got a bit to think about and under a 15 second shot clock that's not always going to be possible. Although it's not necessarily quite a tactical frame anymore because Carl's blasted out one of the clusters. So he's going to look to play a lot of turn here. Yeah, played a good shot. So Luke's throwing the gauntlet down now. Carl back at the table but got a play from where he is that wasn't a foul that was just a loss of turn and if he can't manage to pull something out here in the next three seconds he's going to rush this he's going to be in trouble because there was always every chance he was going to leave Luke in amongst the balls so a slightly more normal pattern of play resumed now five minutes on the match clock still so no problem obviously for this frame 15 seconds there on the shot clock so Luke's going to have to get on with it all the balls have got a pocket though so you wouldn't imagine that being a problem he's been having to scrap to keep his way in this match despite basically playing to a decent standard so Luke's going to be pretty pleased for this chance good opportunity to get ahead for the first time So, looks like it will be Luke getting to the hill first. A match that it's been pretty much impossible to call at any stage and still not looking any the more likely. Deciding to leave the eight ball at slightly more distance but so consistent with this kind of shot that you can't imagine that being a problem. And the eight ball is down. Crucial break for Luke Gilbert. And would you know it, he's come up dry. Time definitely starting to be a factor here. If this is a slow frame it could be the last frame that we have time for so six red could be a possibility oh and that's a bad miss Carl needed to get that red get the colour selected I think he took his mind slightly off the pot just focusing on where the cue ball was going trying to set the cannon up Still not a guaranteed clearance though here. There's the ball tied up on the left hand side. The best ball to get into that one that's tied up will be the, the red that's nearest it to the centre. It doesn't have the angle here though. So look at where he leaves the white. Good shot now Luke's destiny in his own hands 
think the eight ball does pot to the bottom left corner just about. If it doesn't, he could just play a gentle nudge to open it up. I'd love to just get this done here and now. This has got all the hallmarks of a match where things keep turning around. Luke just wants to get this match done, get his place booked in the semi-final and move on from here. The eight ball does pot direct. This is a, a simple position of shot. If he's got to leave an angle to nudge into it, and he hasn't got an angle to nudge into it, so he's going to have to hope that it it does pot. He's actually not got the best angle all in all. Played that well, loading up the side to come around the two cushions. It's going to be hampered over the yellow, but mid-distance shot to get this match closed out. Very good, very good indeed from Luke Gilbert. Strange match, had a bit of everything thrown in there. Luke Gilbert always looked the more likely winner. It seemed to be queuing really well, but just seemed to keep getting tied up in situations. And then Carl Morris just kept turning up, kept hanging on in there, pulling out shot after shot.